again, everyone, and welcome to another Family Ties production of Western Big Six Basketball. And this truly is Western Big Six Basketball tonight, even though it's the sectional final here at United Township High School. Tonight's game, a rematch, a two-time rematch between the Moline Maroons and the Galesburg Silver Streaks, who will be the home team tonight. This is Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders. We've got Jess Medina, producer, cameraman tonight, and Tim Sanders is going to help out with stats. Coach Sanders. What do you think? How, how, about, a, how about a history lesson? Oh, my. Uh, there's a lot of basketball fans here tonight, so uh, maybe those people at home need to get reacquainted with uh, what's happened so far this season with these two teams. Well, I think even a year ago, and especially uh, since Rod Thompson moved to Galesburg early in the summertime or even last spring, the talk started about this Galesburg-Moline matchups. Uh, we were there and fortunate to do the first ball game at uh, Orton Fieldhouse. Yeah, uh, Galesburg won that ball game 73-59 but we both know that was a much closer ball game than that. Uh, there was a run in the middle of the second quarter where, where uh, uh, Galesburg got on a little bit of a roll, and Moline missed some free throws, and it allowed right. Galesburg to build about a seven-point lead, and they kept it pretty much the rest of the way, and then free throws at the end kind of sealed it. But a much closer game. The second game now down at Galesburg, again won by Galesburg, 65-61. We, we don't want to forget that Moline led in that ball game with 44 seconds to go. So Moline has had an opportunity to win both ball games. They haven't. We've talked a lot about trying to beat somebody three times in a season. Very, very difficult to do. But I tell you, you can take the 26 and 2, 25 and 2, throw that kind of out the window. It's a one-game set right now, Coach. You know, we've got two state-ranked teams here, according to the last poll I've seen. Uh, Maroons at their 25 and 2 mark. They're, they're 25 in Galesburg on the year. Their two exactly losses right. have been to Galesburg. Yep. Seventh rank in the latest AP poll. Galesburg in the latest poll I've seen was third rank. And their two losses are the two highly ranked teams. One out of the St. Louis area in a shootout around Christmas time. And, it, and the second loss to, I think it was a number two rated Fenwick team at the time. And another shootout up in the uh, suburbs. Right. So, so some high powered teams, some high powered offense. Uh, talk a little bit about the primetime players here. We've got uh, Joy Range and Rod Thompson. You alluded to Thompson moving in and maybe solidifying Galesburg's uh, lineup for sure. Give him another big man in the middle to complement Range's abilities. And for uh, the Maroons, we've got Travis Wilson and Ian Hanovan. Well, but but they're, neither team is a two-man team. Exactly right. And I think that's what you got to keep in mind. And we talked about this in the first game. We weren't fortunate enough to broadcast the second game, but the primetime players pretty much neutralized each other. And some of what you call the unsung heroes were the ones that kind of took those games on. So I think in, in reality, we have great matchups all up and down the lineup. When we introduce the starting lineups, you're going to see seniors. You're going to see great experience. You're going to see... Uh, Kids that have responded to pressure, big time pressure, not only this year, but last year. Of course, we remember last year, Moline played in the super sectional right. against uh, Rockford Boylan. So they've been through the wars, and Galesburg's been through the wars, too. This is going to be a fine game. Somebody's going to make a basket or two somewhere along the line, and somebody will win, and either team just, is justified in uh, representing this area in the super section will be held next uh, Tuesday in Rockford. You know, what you, what, whichever team gets out of here is going gonna, is gonna to really make a mark. I look for one of these two teams to be playing down at Champaign next weekend. So, and, and if, you know, I'm looking around the gym here, and it's really nice to see the Panther Den filled to every corner because it is filled every corner. That's right. Exactly right. And, and there's kind of electricity in the air. People are kind of sitting back. And there are a lot of people here that are not necessarily Galesburg and or uh, Moline fans. And once this thing starts, they're going to choose sides, Coach. And yeah. we're going to see who the majority of the people are here to watch. And uh, it should be real exciting. We've got a good officiating crew with uh, Fireball, Rayford, and Randall. Uh, uh, we, we, we know their quality officials from the Peoria area. And we'll just see, are they going to call it tight? They're going to call it loose. That's something you got to take a look at. I thought the game the other night, only UT game was called just right. So yeah. we'll see if this one is going to be and called. And the players the will way. make their adjustments. Exactly right. Well, as the teams complete their warm-ups, we'll have to take a break and uh, come right back with a starting lineup. So we'll be right back from the Panther Den after this message. Panther Den just in time for the starting lineups. Jim Sanders with the starting lineup for the Moline Maroons. Well, for Moline, we've got number five, a 5'10 junior, averaging 5.7 points a game, Ryan Dexter. For senior, Kenny Springer. Kenny Springer, 6'5 
6'4 senior will be at the other guard, and he is the guy we really like to watch play. At four, number 32, Joe Kettner gets us out another start in this ball game. Big factor in the ball game. 44, 6'3 senior, Travis Wilson. And it's center for Moline. Number 50, 6'5 senior, Ian Hannibal. Very experienced group and a fine basketball team. Frank Dexter is the head coach. And now for this over Coached by Mike Miller. Five and two coming in. At one guard, six foot one inch senior, number 12, Steve Glasgow. Also at guard, a six foot senior, number 22, Taylor Thiel. And forward for the streaks. Number 32, a six foot six inch senior, number 32, Rod Thompson. And forward for the, for the streaks, a six foot five inch senior, the big man. Number 34, Joey Range, Iowa bound, leading scorer, leading rebounder. And the man in the center, a six foot four inch senior, number 54, Mike Tapper. Well, we've got the introductions made. <laughs> wow, it's loud in here. And now we're gonna take a pause here for our national anthem, sung by Shailen Ware from the United Township High School Music Department. National anthem, boy, fine job it was too, Coach. Beautiful Davis. job, beautiful. And a lot of pressure there too, Coach. I've, I've refereed a lot of these games, played in some games not at this level, but I don't think I'd ever want to step out there and try to sing that national anthem in a crowd like this. Well, here we go, 26 and two Galesburg, 25 and two Moline Maroons. Well, yeah, let's get ready to rumble. It's gonna be a good game. What a matchup. The players meet at center court to get ready. Which fireball will be our referee this evening? Looks like Range yep. and Hannon are going to do the tip. Yep. <clears throat> and we'll see those guys battle under the boards all night long, I'm sure. There's a, there's a great sense of anticipation there here really in the is. gym, you know what? They're going to they're make Travis Wilson take the the rubber band off his wrist was probably the first time it's happened all year. That's some but kind of a rule? Oh yeah. You're not a sweatband, but no jewelry. Now is that a sweatband or is that jewelry? Yeah. Hanneman controls well, it's the It's gonna go to the Maroon. It's gonna it's be going to Galesburg. Yep. Mike Tampa Boy. had a chance to grab that ball. He said, nope. nope. Well, right now, Moline, did. boy, Hanneman got up. Yeah, Moline's. But Streaks get the first possession. Maroons are gonna drop back in a two-three zone. 
Down to range, he can't handle the pass. Here come the Maroons. Travis Wilson with the ball across the 10 second line, top of the circle. Next turn, they're going to set up. Galesburg is going to play. Looks like man to man. Looks like man to man. I think yep. it is. Yep. They're chasing across there. Inside feed, Wilson stops, pops. That ball was blocked big time. Rod Thompson quickly out. Oh, Steve Glasgow finishes it off. And you can get a taste of what the crowd's going to be like tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you, if, I mean, I'm going to apologize in advance, fans, because if Coach Smith and I get talking right on top of each other, it's because we can't hear each other. So that was a great play uh, by Galesburg and a big jump early. Here we go, Steve Glasgow. The old-fashioned three-point play. And he does it. Only gets the ball inbound. They're going to go to the sideline fast break play. Dexter to Travis Wilson. Three-pointer on its way. A little short. He had a hand of it on that rebound. Wilson on a tip. Wilson on a control tip. Here comes Thompson. Two rebounds, rebounds for Mr. Though. Thompson already. A lot of rebounds, though, for Moline early. Thompson from the free throw line. Got it. Oh, it's not the start that Moline would like to get. No, I'm sure Moline wants to keep it close, as does Galesburg. Sure Nobody do. wants to let the other team run out on them. Token pressure that time by Galesburg at about the three-quarter court level. Hanneman across in the lane, stops. Tries to draw that foul, doesn't get it. The ball's going to go to him, back to Moline. Well, we've got interesting matchups in there. We've got Range guarding uh, Wilson and uh, Thompson guarding Hanneman. So you got the big two on the big two. Yes, they do. Range with a decided height advantage over Wilson, though. Uh, got two or three inches on yep. him anyway. Well, four, four Division I players in this ballgame. We've mentioned that before, but they're all out there. So far, the play inside, Hanneman's had a couple shots. Well, Travis Wilson's had a couple shots, and Galesburg's leaning on him, and there's no fouls called on that situation yet. So we'll see. Dexter for three. Big basket for Ryan Dexter. 22 to go in the first quarter. Quick shot up by Thiel. One Travis, shot. Travis, yeah, one shot. Moline rebound. Ball's loose in the lane. Man, a lot oh. of reach and hacking. Knocked away no by Range. No there. foul they, on that one. It looked fairly clean. Offense. That Range dipped that shoulder in there. Right? Yeah. That was a good call. Five to three, Galesburg. Well, Moline will inbounds the ball against full court zone press. A one, two, two zone press. Kind of token pressure right now. And as they bring the ball across the 10 second line, Galesburg's gonna pick up man to man. Coach Dexter off the bench. He's signaling a play here. Let's see if they run a little different offense. Nice entry pass, Springer. Hanneman for two. Beautiful pass. Well, we saw it the other night. Hanneman's tough down low. Five fives our score here. Oh, great entry pass there, Coach. Oh, look out. Oh, range, nice pass down low oh, to Thompson. Man. That ball got there in a hurry. That foul's going to be on Travis Wilson. Tried to strip that ball. Got too much arm. Yep. Well, it's 5-5 five, five here. 5-31 to go. Rod Thompson going to go to the line, shoot two. First one rattles around and goes. Our first substitute is going to come back in the ball game, and we, as expected, Marcus Morrow will be the first sub. Kettner will sit down. Now Moline is back to that lineup that they started predominantly the whole season. Most of the season, yeah. Thompson, second one, up and good. Two-point Galesburg lead. Man-to-man -man press this time looks like. Not much pressure, and that's good. I'm never making Moline dribble the ball a few extra times, get the ball down the court, and eventually they've got the ability to tighten that up every once in a while. They, we'll they, see if they, they do that. They, they lull you to sleep and then maybe spring right. something on you later. Springer, nice pass. That might have been tipped. Nope. Thought it was tipped there, but it wasn't. Coach Dexter would have preferred a bounce pass, I imagine, on the entry there. 
So Galesburg with the ball and a chance to extend the lead now. Five minutes, just over five minutes left in the first quarter. So we're just underway here. I think the nerves are probably gone now. Ball, both teams now start playing their, the basketball. And they've been playing pretty good at this point. So I'm looking for this game to be even better and better as we go. We got a, a hand we got check coming here. here. That Ryan Dexter has got his hands on uh, Steve Glasgow over there. So that's two on Dexter. Yeah. And three two, team fouls now. We got two early the other uh, on Wednesday night also. So we'll see. That's critical for Moline's depth, although as we saw the last time, Moline was able to play with seven, eight guys and still be very, very effective. Field. That's going to be Jerry Reigns. He, he came in on the back. That's, that's two quick fouls on him in the first two minutes of the game. And we got subs coming in. Number 24 is checking in. That's Patrick Hanlon. And number 20, Bo Shea. Field's going to go to the now base. we'll see what happens. Seven five lead. Kind of mark that down. Four forty eight to go. First quarter. And Joey Range is going to sit down here, and we'll see how long he sits and what the score is when he comes back in. Moline controls. Dexter with the ball. Marcus Morrow entry pass inside. Travis Wilson. Look at that Wilson, move. Tough shot off the baseline. My goodness. Wow. Seven seven. Two three zone again by Moline. Go well, they, they're going to. Marcus Morrow. Oh, nice play. Morrow's going to get caught for a low block. Four team fouls now on the Maroons. Boy, great to go on. We're going to be shooting free throws here yeah. before too long. Yeah, you don't want that necessarily in a ball game like this. Well, really the kids are just playing hard. It's, not, it's nothing a, that's... Uh, nope. And the officials are calling what has to be called. I mean, those have all been fouls. There hasn't right, been one yet. Right. It wasn't a, a legitimate foul. And the, kid and the team must adjust. Both teams must adjust. Boche sophomore. Yep, go ahead. Try to set the line up here for you. That's Thompson. He's shuffling his feet as he put the ball on the floor. Oh, a turnover. Teams are taking turns, giving the ball back to right. each other here. Yep. Well, Moline's playing very good defense right now. A little more pressure this time by uh, Galesburg. Man to man, though. There's a pick. We talked a little bit. Uh, last time about giving uh, Dexter a little help bringing that ball down. You can do it by either letting somebody else handle it or set a pick for him so he doesn't get have to go the full length of the court one-on-one. -on -one. You, you wear that point guard out if you make him work right. hard every time. Springer up and under. Ball was tipped. They want goaltending, but no way. Oh, we've got a foul. Looks like Thompson here. Plus, you got to admire the way Moline rebounds, and they're tenacious on the boards. Yeah, that's going to go on uh, Rod Thompson. So Thompson picks up a foul. Range has got uh, two, Thompson one, and they've got all three fouls from yep. the streaks. So Moline will have the ball. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, Moline's going to take the ball to the basket. They're going to go low post. Travis walk. He Travis walked. ran out of there. <laughs> That's that quick step, Coach, but in that case, there are about three quick steps. That's real quick, but you got to put it on the floor <laughs> when you do that. So back to Galesburg. They talk about the big step. That was the three little steps as he came out of there. Well, since you uh, been over a minute since range left the game. There's only been one basket. Yep. That's been by Moline. They've weathered the storm. I think this group for Galesburg, very experienced still. Thompson. Rod right Thompson showing his range here. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> Hanneman rolls, will not go. Who's, who's this foul going to be on? Big call. 54, Mike Tapper. Tapper for the ball. So Hanneman's going to go to the line. Great move. I'll tell you, Moline is, is doing what you, you think most teams can't do in today's defense is you try to force the people behind the bank board. You know, we never, in our era, you never want to let the guy have the baseline, but the strategy now is give him the baseline and trap him behind the board. And with the square boards, uh, that, that's a good strategy. Right. But Moline's able to come out of there and get good shots. Hanneman gets them both, so he pulls it to within one. Ten to nine streaks, they have the ball. Thompson in the corner, out front to Shea, eyes the bucket. Good quick hands by Hanneman that time. That's a good Tapper. ball movement by Galesburg, coach. Oh, look at that. Ooh, nice hole in the Good zone. Shot. Thompson gets it. Dexter comes up with the rebound. best looks of the night and can't <laughs> knock it down. That's right. Boy, it's wide open, though. Wide open, got a good look. Tipped away. 
Got Taylor Thiel going to check back into the ball game now. He's going to come and get uh, Patrick Hanlon. Well, right now, the strategy by Moline here is very obvious. They're going to get the ball low post to Hanneman or low post to Wilson, and we're gonna, they're going to see what's going to happen along the way. Well, when Range left the game, oh, oh Travis, God. point blank. Travis, point blank. When Range left the game, Thompson went to Wilson, and Wilson's got some shots yep, off. He sure has. 2.29 to go. 10-9, Galesburg. Sectional final. That's Shea out on the point now. He's running things. Tapper, three. Now the big man up front. That's why he's in the starting lineup. Well, I'll tell you, that's uh, <laughs> two three pointers by some guys that are over six foot four, six yep. foot six. Hanneman, oh, nice step. He got fouled on the way to the basket. There. Coach Miller up off the bench. Ben and the officials there said, I think he might have walked into and the one you like is the, the coaches. Why, why this happens, I never know. They're always talking to the poor guy who didn't blow his whistle. <laughs> now, you can't really get mad at me. Yeah, I didn't you know blow you my might whistle. pass it along, no? <laughs> well, you know it. how that works in football. Yeah, they, it never gets you to the guy you want sure to talk to. You make sure you tell them what color you think is holding. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, who's in the lane? Which team? Hanlon, back into the ball game now. Yeah, Moline's going to look inside. Travis Wilson. Nice move. Stops, pops, big rebound by Boy, Rod Thompson. All over the glass. Well, he's going to have to be a big man on the on the boards right now, especially with range out of there. Jay Thiel on the wing, wide open. Right oh, hand up a good shot. He doesn't want it. Maybe the discipline they've look, they're looking for. Jay three, no, won't go. Long rebound, Travis Wilson. Nice rebound, Travis. Dive, stops, pops. Not many people can make that shot, Coach. Not very many people in high school basketball. You know, that wasn't too bad a defense, and Wilson just pulled up and Great knocked defense. it down. 13-11, 120 to go here in the first quarter. Just what we expected it to be. A great yeah. defensive game. Oh, my. <laughs> a springer just came and climbed right up to Rod Thompson's chest, knocked him down. Travis Wilson for three. Hanneman. They think he's over the back. Tip again. Hanneman again. And Travis Wilson control. Marcus Morrow. Springer on the drive. Nice Beautiful dig. pass. That ball won't go down for Moline right now. Got a lot of good looks. Boy, they did got a lot of good looks. I think Hannibal might have got away with one on the I back. I think there. so. He was he was well high, but I think he was still on his back. Okay, Coach 30. Miller up off the bench. Yep. He wants him to, he's got a set play he wants him to run. 36 seconds. Are they going to go for one shot, do you think, against the zone? Probably, yes. 13-11 lead. <laughs> set play. Maybe they go for one, or maybe they just shoot yep. a layup if they yep. go. Or we'll shoot it right there. Or we'll let Thompson shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll shoot that baby from there. 19 seconds to go. 15-11. Marcus Morrow for the Maroons. Nine points now for Rod Thompson. Double nine low post. Nine rebound. I Double don't know how many rebounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little foul inside. Like Theo's got a got the hands on him. Thompson's got four rebounds by our stats coach right now. Travis Wilson's got four. Hanneman's got three. Four seconds to go. Moline to get one shot. Well, I'll tell you what, the Maroons are uh, going to be in the bonus here. Morrow. Oh, they're going to count that. Marcus baby. Morrow. Marcus Morrow can do that down low. Most guards aren't going to get that shot off. Count that basket. 24. That's going to go on uh, Hanlon. And that, give, and that gives uh, Galesburg seven team fouls in the first quarter. So two seconds to go. One shot here. Marcus Morrow trying to complete the three-point play. Shot on its way. Won't go. Tip. Won't go, and that's the quarter right there. Who? I'll tell you, and I'll say it again, we have the worst horn in the entire Western civilization. You can almost it hear it. It can't be impossible to fix that. Well, let's take a short break here. This is Jim Sanders with Jim Smith. Uh, this is TCI Channel 38. It's a Family Ties production. We'll be right back with second quarter action. Galesburg leads 15-13. <laughs> Well, here we 
are back at the Panther Den. And starting first quarter, or excuse me, second quarter action. Yeah. I'm so excited I can't speak. 15-13, <laughs> Galesburg jumps out. <laughs> they don't exactly jump out. It was back and forth, although right. Galesburg had the lead most of the way. Right. Well, for Moline, uh, in the second quarter here, they're back to what has been their starting lineup all year long with Dexter Morrow, Travis Wilson, Hanavan, and Springer. And Galesburg's got their starters. Oh, no, uh, take that back. Moshe is in there instead of uh, Glasgow, but they've got uh, Theo. No, excuse me, Glasgow is in there. Range is back in the lineup. Right. Thompson's back in. Galesburg's in the zone now, trying to guard against those fouls, I think. It might be. Moline crashing the boards right now. Springer, nice toss. Hanavan. Offensive board by uh, Ryan Dexter. Another big rebound. Third shy three-pointer, won't go. What a great effort on the board. Moline almost had four possessions out of that. Three offensive boards and a foul. He might have got him. He might have got him a little bit by the hook and by the arm a little bit. That's what yeah, we had. We did not have a very good angle of where we're at. I know that. Uh, I know Morrow ended up with the ball. I know that much. But how he got it, I'm not sure. And his wristwatch. 15-13. <laughs> Galesburg. Steal. From the corner, air ball. Oh, air ball. Rebound by Springer. Mm. Looks down court, feeds to Hanneman. Hanneman on a nice layup. Springer on the assist. Hanneman on the basket, 15-15 tie. Tough to stop Hanneman on the blocks. Yeah. You gotta follow him. He's out of bounds. Green's dropped it down. Yep. Or, uh, Range drops it down to uh, Thompson, who's out of bounds. Here comes Tapper back in, and Boucher's going to go out. Well, that has some height, and they, they definitely got to find a way to rebound with Moline right well, now. Well, they got the got We're three in a situation big men in where now. it's about Thompson, a uh, Range and Tapper, all 6'4 or better. 15 7 on the rebound count right now. Moline. Travis Wilson for three, a little long. Boy. And, and uh, Springer was there. It got over his head, but he had great position. Long shot, long rebound. Yep. Yeah, yep. that happens. Deal. Thompson from the free throw line loses the ball, gets it back. Loose on the floor. We're going to get a foul call. And the Moline fans don't like it. That's going to go on Hanover. <laughs> fans aren't going to like that call real well. Looking for a jump ball, but you've got to have a hold of the ball while you're rolling around in there. So no, that's first on. Uh, that's the first on Hanneman. So yeah. both teams are going to be in the bonus now. Yeah, from this point on, and and uh, last time through in the second quarter, Galesburg shot free throws well, and Moline didn't in the game at Moline. Range 15 oh, foot. He cannot find the range. Well, he's Marcus still shot on another rebound. No, oops. Now nah, a little out of control. Nice idea. Bad execution. There's Range first two of the night. And he breaks the tie, 17-15 now. Springer for the long three won't go. Moline's shooting that ball real quick right now, Coach. Yeah. And then uh, I guess they're counting on getting it up there and getting the offensive boards maybe, but it didn't happen the last two times. Mike Tapper, second three-pointer of the night for Tapper. Well, I believe he shot in a three-point contest, so this isn't new and, and revolutionary to him anyway. Yeah, he's not afraid. 20 to 15 now, yeah. right? biggest lead of the night. Five minutes, 18 seconds to go here. The winner of this ball game to go to Rockford to play probably Rockford Boylan on Tuesday night. A rematch if Moline gets there. And Moline's looking at zone and are, and are trying to figure out how to get that ball inside. Travis Wilson, long three, strong again. Dexter keeps it alive. A lot of hustle, but they've got, no, Galesburg's got the numbers. Deal. Two Thompson. We've got a foul coming. Somebody reaching in. Looks like Hanneman. Wow. That's two on Hanneman, and we'll shoot free throws. Now we're, go now we're going to see whether the teams can make some free throws. Coach, it's getting louder and louder in here. Of course, I got my finger in my ear so I can hear myself. <laughs> <laughs> one and one. And well, who's going to?
to shoot. They're trying to decide who, who's, who he fouled. Yeah. This is always embarrassing when all of a sudden you're not quite sure who got fouled. Well, he pointed at Thompson. He I was, don't think he was in there. I don't think he was there. Well, he's when in doubt, he's, he's going to shoot it. Point to the one. Yep. Ah, didn't go. And Coach Dexter says, that's that's poetic justice there. Yeah, yeah. nothing hurt. Yeah. Not, pick up a, a bad on hand, but they always miss a free throw. <laughs> <laughs> well, Moline now still having a little trouble reading and adjusting to this zone defense. They're getting it set up. Quick pass, Dexter. Perimeter shot for three. Range high for the rebound. Boy, Moline's getting uh, some good looks and they're just yes, not they knocking are. them down. Well, they're having to shoot three-point shots instead of the first quarter. They're shooting uh, point-blank layups. And that's got to be on 54. That's a good call. That's good anticipation by Travis. You bet you. Vaughn, the tapper in there battling for it. But if you're watching this game it's on TV, and you obviously you are, because otherwise you wouldn't know what I'm going to say right now, uh, take a look back at that tape and look at how short the shots were for Moline in the first quarter and where they're shooting them from now, Coach. And three fouls now on Tapper. He goes out as Hanlon comes in. Tapper will probably be gone for the rest of the half, yeah. I would guess. He's hit a couple threes, hasn't he, Coach? Yeah, he's hit two threes. That's his yep. six points on two threes. Yep. Wilson's going to go to the line, shoot the, the bonus. Yeah, nailed that one. 2016 as Moline starts to claw back into this ball game. The scoring is really, it actually is. Uh, there hasn't been, hasn't been any score for over a minute here, and that right. was the first points in a minute. Strong. And Lane's now back, still playing that 2-1-2 uh, two, two looks like. They're stretching like, it out a little bit. Yeah. They're, they're, they're contesting that line anyway. That's Glasgow with the ball. It's hard to do with the zone to still protect the middle, but Moline's doing a pretty good job. They got to keep Hanneman away from that third foul, though. Range in the paint. No, 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 no. They're going to get a foul on Hanneman. No shot. That's Ian Hanneman. Big, big foul. That's three fouls on Hanneman. Range is going to go to the line. That's a tough call. Shoot one and one. One and one, Joey Range. But more importantly, Kettner's had to come in the lineup, and that's he's a good player. But Ian Hanneman's going to sit down, like you say, now for the rest of this half, for sure. But Kettner steps right up, gets it all, a defensive rebound, and gives Moline the ball back, down by four. 3.42 to go here. In the first half, Moline works the ball in the perimeter. Ooh, Morrow. <laughs> Whew. One of those, nobody's cutting. Nobody's cutting. <laughs> Unforced error there, Coach. Well, both teams. Moline look a little rattled right now, but they uh, do. They do. But uh, the good news is uh, Galesburg's not scoring much either, so down by four. Like I said, I, know, I noted that time it was... Uh, at the 520 mark, it was five, tw five point lead, 20 to 15. How do you like that one? <laughs> Very high percentage. <laughs> That's one. Now, Gillsburg shooting that one, and Moline's firing the threes. And the crowd is in the ball game. And there's a bunch of people here for Galesburg. And the Moline crowd's going to get up and make some noise. <laughs> and Moline turns it over, and the Galesburg crowd yep. answers back. Oh, this is exciting. This is very good. This is the way it ought to be. Ball's loose. <laughs> Patrick Hanlon, man on the spot. Moline well, needs a timeout, folks, right now. They're going to get one. And it's going to be a 20. Why don't we keep it here for the 20? Talk about what Moline has to do to keep Galesburg from running off of this thing. Well, I'll tell you what, two things have happened. Since uh, Galesburg has gone to the zone, Moline, the only shots, Mo well, they've had two turnovers out front here with, without any real pressure from Galesburg, and every shot they're putting up right now is a three. And uh, at the other end now, Galesburg is kind of solving that zone. They've made them stretch it out because right. they made some threes, and now they're getting slam dunks under the basket on the alley-oop. 
sometimes and uh, this is a case where we'll see whether a 20 works or not you know uh, can you make a big adjustment or are you just trying to stop the momentum just a little well, bit? Get, I think it's it's imperative for Moen to come down and score this right time. that's the uh, yeah this for their own peace of mind if yeah. nothing else down eight, 242 to go here first yep. half is going to pressure yep. they're going to try to trap oh the fans want to bump on range Oh, we got a foul. Let's see who's, who it's on. Thompson or Reed. Now it up, I think. 32. That'd be Rod Thompson. That's two on Thompson now. This play out front here was big a minute ago because that's Range's third foul if he picks that up. Thompson's got two. What, one or just one? Two fouls on him too, yeah. Travis Wilson shooting one and one for the Maroons. Critical, they come away with points here. First one is good. Mike Tapper back in, boy, he's coming back in with three fouls. He's going to get range. Well, I tell you what, range just, just lucked out and didn't pick up a third a minute ago. And so consequently, you got to wonder, if Tapper may be expendable. I hate to say that, but he may be well, in a game like this. Wilson makes them both, 24-18. Steal. Steal on the inbounds, Morrow Springer. Nice play. Tapper with the didn't board. Didn't get a basket. Travis Turn Wilson over. on the steal. Moline with the ball. Wilson strides. There's got to be a block. Got a block. Got to be a block. On it a block, and that's going to be is that Tapper <laughs> on the floor. That's Tapper again. That's Tapper. Two shot. Travis Wilson moved in the air, slid just enough laterally to force Tapper to move with him. So Tapper picks up his fourth. Man. He's got to go sit down. Here comes Range right back in the ball game. He was out about seven seconds. Right, and that's definitely not what Galesburg had in mind at this point in time. 24-18, 2 14 to go here. And two shots. And Travis more importantly, Wilson. that's the tenth team foul. We got two minutes to go. Maroons will be shooting too. On its way and good. Wilson. Four out of five from the line. Second shot on its way good. A sub for Galesburg. Come Steele back in. He's going to get Shea. So 24-20 at 214. Galesburg with the lead. Whoa. <laughs> Kendra's all over the place. Range inside, outside. Steel around the Glasgow. Obvious why Galesburg is where they're at, though. They move that ball very, very well, showing a lot of patience right Thompson now. Thompson in the middle, 14-footer, good. Thompson, Without Hanovan in there, Coach, that middle's going to open itself there, wide you know, There's nobody to contest that shot, no. even to get the hands up in the face. No. He's just too big. 26-20, minute 35. Galesburg in the yep. second quarter. Galesburg doing a nice job defensively. They're covering quickly. Morrow drives. Charge. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a charging call on Morrow. He goes across the baseline, gets in the air. Yep. I think that was Thompson standing there waiting for him. I didn't see who held his yep. ground, but it was a pretty good defensive call. Joe Manning, number 40, comes in the game, and uh, that's got to be Morrow going, sitting down. I didn't yeah, look. Yeah, what? Marl's because that's his down. third foul. Yep. Morrow's down. Manning is in. So for Moline now, they got uh, a lineup with a couple of starters uh, on that bench right now. Morrow's sitting down. Uh, they got Kettner, Dexter, Manning, Springer, and Travis Wilson. 118 to go. Patrick Hanlon with the ball. Maroon staying with her zone. Range on the outside now. Glasgow from the corner. Rebound off Kettner, off range. No, off Kettner, so it's going to go to the Maroons. Those are the hard calls to make because there's some, there's some, there's a potential of a foul, and the ball then definitely. De <laughs> You're terrible, Hightower, and Hightower's not even here tonight. So anyway, yeah. but that's uh, okay. Uh, that's got to be white ball. ball. Yeah, it's going to go to Galesburg. 56 seconds to go here. 
26-20. Well, set the stage for you, Coach. We got uh, both teams with a double bonus. Got players with foul, some serious foul trouble here in the late in the second quarter. Six-point lead for Galesburg. 54 seconds to go. Range from the three-point line. Knocks it down. Travis Wilson with the ball. Well, after being held scoreless in the first quarter, Travis, oh, Travis, real nice. Travis Wilson answers right back. 29. Oh, they fight Hannon. Nice look. Hannon underneath. Major breakdown by Moline in that zone cover. It's 27 seconds. Galesburg just forced the ball up, the, and then Glasgow found the hand, or, uh, Hannon underneath. Boy, easy laying. Nice 20 seconds. Shot. Boy, everybody's up now, Colt. 18 seconds. Moline's going to go for one shot. 10 seconds. Travis Wilson's going to go to the point, set things up. Will we see him next year? Oh, look at this play. Nice play. Won't go. And we're at halftime from the Panther Den. we the Galesburg Silver Streets. Come back strong at the end of the half and lead the Moline Maroons 31-22. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back with some stats before the start of the second half. This is Jim Sanders with Jim Smith, Tim Sanders, Jess Medina working with us. We'll get you those rebounds and the scoring here in just a minute. This is a TCI, a Channel 38. It's a Family Ties production. We'll be back with second half action in just a minute. Well, here we are back at the Panther Den. Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders. Tim Sanders on the stats. We've got some halftime stats for you here. Again, Galesburg's pulled away here just at the last oh, two, two and a half minutes right. of the second That's quarter. Right. They lead it 31-22. What do you got for us, Coach Sanders? Well, I've got a couple things. Of course, it was 15-13 at the end of the first quarter. And it, uh, obviously, Galesburg comes back with 16, and Moline only got nine. So 31-22 at half. Rebound-wise, fairly close. And I tell you, Midway through that second quarter, Moline had a definite rebounding edge. Then the rebound, then the zone defense came in. Moline stopped getting offensive boards and, and second chance opportunities. And our stats have it 15 for Moline, 14 for Galesburg. Thompson has six rebounds, uh, while Travis Wilson has five for Moline. Well, on the, from the scoring end of things, uh, not unexpected, Travis Wilson leads the Maroons with 11 points. Uh, Hanneman has six points. Ryan Dexter has one three ball for three points. And Marcus Morrow in the game early got two points for the Silver Streaks. Uh, Rod Thompson has led the way. He had uh, 11 points and nine of those in the first quarter. Yeah. Joey Range, who didn't score in the first quarter, had seven in the second quarter. So he has seven at the half. And then Mike Tapper. Uh, six points on two three-point uh, goals. Steve Glasgow with three points and Patrick Hanlon with two second quarter buckets for four points. And maybe a bigger story here, something to keep an eye on, foul trouble. Foul trouble. For Galesburg, Mike Tapper, four fouls in the first half. So, yep. you know, one more miscue and he's gone. Right. Joey Range, Rod Thompson, both with two. For the Maroons, 
Marcus Morrow and Ian Hanneman both with three. So we've got some people in foul trouble here. I think some keys, you take a look at keys in the second half. I think one, Moline is going to have to find a way. First, they got to get Hanneman back in the lineup, obviously. But Moline's got to find a way against that zone, if Galesburg stays with the zone, of getting the ball inside. Against man-to-man -man there on the low block, every possession. They go zone, and every shot becomes a three-point shot. So if Moline has a good 2-1-2 two, uh, two, two zone offense, uh, and right. can get the ball on the low post, then they've got a shot. If they can't solve that, they're going to get beat, and they'll get beat bad. You know, and Moline's showing that they can hit that three ball, too. They, so, uh, they can, but they're going to get one of those. You get the ball low post, you're going to get two, three shots right. in there if you don't make that shot. Well, here we go. Second half starts. Galesburg has the ball. Range to Thompson down the lane, lays it up, partially blocked. Rebound to the Maroon. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, Hanneman went to the board like a wild man. Those fouls are not going to bother him. He's, and he's got to play that way. Now they got the ball to the high post to Hanneman. He stops. The ball gets knocked away from him and comes off the glass. Yeah, loses it on the way up, maybe. Yep. Thinking somebody kicked that thing out of there. Field to Thompson. Dips his shoulder. Turns up. Pops it. Knocks it down. Rod right Thompson. Ryan Dexter went down hard that time. Coach. Thought he could draw the charge. Didn't get the call. Well, 11 points. 33-22, Galesburg. Yeah. Moline's got to stop the bleeding here pretty quick. They're going to have to, you know, like you say, if they can hit one of those three balls, maybe, that would make a big difference here. Springer's wide up. They're daring him to shoot that ball. Morrow takes a three from the top. Won't go. Hanneman, great rebound. Spin move. Left-hand shot. Won't go. And controlled by Galesburg. Rod Thompson ahead. That's steal on the wing. He eyes it. He pulls it down. Inside range has it in the paint, turns, fires good. Boy, he elevates in a real big hurry. Coach Dexter wants timeout right now. Moline takes timeout with 6.40 to go, third quarter. 35 22. They're all. Some of the fans are on the officials here a little bit, but right now, Galesburg's out playing Moline in every aspect of the game. Well, why don't we take a quick break here and uh, get to as Moline reorganizes, so will we. So we'll be right back. Man. Yes, they do. Galesburg has stretched that nine-point lead to 13 right now. One, three, one zone by Galesburg this time. Now they're going to match up a little bit maybe out there with that. Inside, outside. They're getting the looks. They got to bury that shot. Ryan Dexter got one. That could make a difference. Official pointed the wrong way. I think he pointed the wrong way. Yeah. 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 It's going to be real hard for it to be Moline ball. But you do that as an official once in a while. You you know you got to get it right, and they got it right that time. It was. What you're trying to tell me is the officials are human. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we they fans think we're not human, but we are human. Not superhuman though. And that's where some fans go astray and some officials go astray when they think they are superhuman. But these guys are doing a consistently good job here. Nice little left-hand hook. Little jump hook. Hanneman for two, 35-27. And Moline's back in the ball game. Timeout. Coach, I can call this game yet. I can call that from here. Well, we'll see how long Galesburg will go without using a timeout. Moline got a quick timeout here to start the second half, and it's helped. We'll see. Another basket by Moline. Who knows? Well, that was 35-22. Uh, it's now 35-27. Are you on? In the corner, Spranger with the ball. Spranger with the ball out at the hand of it, or to see with Travis Wilson, my bad. Morrow for three. They need that one. Hanneman tries to tip a great position that time by Joey Range. Too good 
of a shot. Too good of a shot. Inside Hanneman. That block is rejected. That ball came back faster than he ever shot. It was live. And Moline's going to set up, and they got to regain their composure. Ten points. That's not a. That's not insurmountable. There's a lot the of time. There's a lot, a lot of, time. of time. Don't get rattled. But they're having trouble finding shots now. They're trying to work the low block. Oh, we'll just hit a long three. We'll just let Dexter throw up those threes. He's got nine points, three threes. Hanlon drives, loses it. Oh, goes oh. right to range. Right guy at the right place at the right time. Boy, Hanlon was coming strong across the paint, lost it, hit range right there, yep. lays it in. But he did have good position, though, I will say that. Dexter again, 4-3. Dexter's on fire right now. Well, Dexter's going to shoot him back into this. Six points now. Well, at this point in the game, you can trade him threes for twos, but not threes Thiel for threes. Thiel tries to answer. Taylor Thiel, his first this point is real tonight. basketball, Coach. Travis Wilson stops, pops. A Springer, nope. Hanneman, yes. I'll tell you one thing, after Joy Range and... Uh, and Rod Thompson fall down trying to block Travis Wilson's shot. That left out of and wide open, didn't it? Yeah, he was, he was a big man in there all of a sudden. <laughs> well, let's see what Galesburg does. Boy, we're back and forth now. Oh, 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 oh that ball almost went in. Range lost it on the way up. Hanneman gets trapped, but they said Steele's got a little too much defense on him, and he'll get called for the foul. His second. Moline gets the ball back. 3-10 to go here, down by seven. Well, three consecutive three balls by Ryan Dexter got Moline right back into the thick of yep. this thing. If not point-wise, which it did, but emotionally. Yep. That's right. Well, especially they came after Hanneman gets a ball blocked about 200 miles an hour, driven clear back to 10 second line, and an opportunity if Moline doesn't convert there, this game could go the other way in a real big, yeah, hurry. Real big hurry. But he's done a nice job with Dow. Look at the different defense now. Coach Miller changes defenses. Not going to hold. He's going to count it. Going to count it. Credit Dexter with that basket. Joey range high above the rim. Goal 10 is our call. And now 42 37. Well, now Galesburg needs to answer. Boy, the fans, the Moline fans are going nuts. Timeout by Time Galesburg. Out, yeah. Galesburg calls timeout. We're 243 to go here. Full timeout. Let's take a break. Galesburg leads 42-37. This is TCI Channel 38, Family Ties Production. Hope you're enjoying it. If you are, please contact TCI or call Jess Medina, 755-7607. Let him know if Moline can come back and win this ball game. We are going to try to make every effort possible to go to Rockford on Tuesday night and bring you that game. So uh, watch the papers and see what might happen there. But we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Now we're back at the Panther Den. Jim Smith with Jim Sanders. Young Tim Sanders on the stats. Jess Medina on the camera. We got a barn burner going. Moline in the middle of a 15 to seven run right now here in the third quarter. Moline's They've gone from a 35-22 deficit to a 42-37 yep. deficit. They pull it within from 13 down to five. Moline's going to try that 1-2-2 two, two zone again that, that they tried the other night against UT, and maybe they've got that middle uh, problem solved a little bit. Wilson, too close to Thompson. Going to be a foul on Travis. Not a whole lot of fouls this half, Coach. That's his second. That's the first team foul on the Maroons. So Galesburg will have the ball under their basket on their end line. They're running inbounds play. Over the top, the to range. Oh. Just throw me a jump ball. There he goes to the hole from the free throw line. Counting. Eight third quarter points now for Joey Range. Yeah. He's answering back a little bit himself, isn't he? Really working hard inside. Thompson and, and Hanneman. That's turnover by the Maroons. They don't need that right now. What momentum is in this ball game, Coach? It just, it jumps from one side of this court to the other in, in, in a split second. And Mole 
Lane's going to set that. Uh, now they're going to stretch that defense out. Range in the middle. Turns, fakes. Drug his pivot foot. Going to be a traveling call. We'll go the other way. Take a look next time Moline comes down and plays defense, because that time it looked like uh, Travis Wilson was following Joey Range man to man out there. But maybe that was just the area of the zone he's supposed to cover. But he went a long way to get there that time. A little boxing one, maybe? Well, we'll see. Galesburg picking up the defensive yeah. pressure. And they're back playing man to man now, so he should be able to get the ball in the low post. Hanneman trying to get rid of that ball, man to man. Have you noticed that Ryan Dexter hadn't had a shot lately? Yep. Well, after yep. making three threes that's in a right. row, Shea's, all of a sudden Bo Shea is living with it. That's right. Shea's a good, quick kid, and he, he won't get the shots there now. Now Moline's got to get those shots on the low post. Get it inside. That's where you want the ball. Oh, look at the help. Big block. He had his hand, Ralph. He had his hand. As soon as Hanneman got that ball, Thompson and Rays both ran to him in a big hurry. Yeah. They both blocked that and shot. And they had him trapped behind the bank board semi. A clean block. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Morrow, ball three. Marcus Morrow. 44 40. Hillsburg leads by four. One minute to go. Well, that stopped that bleeding. You've Close as Moline's been for a while. Hanlon on the dribble. Range along the baseline, lays it up and in. Boy, it makes it look easy. Boy, he came from that baseline in front of that board in a hurry. Just makes it look easy. Here comes Wilson. Travis Wilson, free throw line, stops and pops. Coach, you don't have to talk much in a game like this. Just nope. watch the game develop. Wilson's first two of the second half here. 13 for him. Yep. Yeah, Gallows are in a hole for one. 46-42. What a game. Well, Moline can make a stop right here. Uh, the great recovery here in this in this uh, third quarter. Jay out two, front. 2-3 by Moline right now, but they're going to match up a little bit with him. Oh, steal. Travis Wilson. Stop. Pops. Yeah. Out that basket. Five seconds to go. Moline's got it. Hanneman in the air. That was for the lead. And we're at the end of three quarters from the Panther then. Galesburg holds on to a slim 46-44 lead. There isn't anybody in the place not standing up right now, Coach. What a basketball game. We'll take a break. We'll come back with fourth quarter action in just a minute. Boy, you can hear the crowd. All those people that fought hard for these tickets are sure glad they're here. Yeah. What a ball game. 46 44 Galesburg. Well, I want to mention the sportsmanship for both sides has been pretty darn good. Yeah. I mean, they're cheering for their team and they're not paying a whole lot of attention to what the other team is doing. The officials are marked men, obviously. You know that going in. Every time you blow the whistle, half the people like it, half the people don't like it. So, but I think they've been good sports towards the players from the other team, and that's what's important. Boy, Galesburg, or Moline with a 22-15 third quarter. 
Oh, yeah. Travis, one too many steps. Now, just a, uh, even Travis Wilson has trouble moving that far without traveling, but a good idea, and they got the ball against man-to-man -man on the low post. 7.36 to go here. We're in the fourth quarter, two-point lead for Galesburg. Thompson, three-pointer. Oh, it. He is smooth. Dexter will bring the ball across from Moline. You know, I was man about to, to say he's got a nice touch for a big man, but he's got a nice touch, period. Period. That's right. Joey Rays kind of got up in his face that time. I think he bothered the shot. We're going to get a block. That's a big foul. That should be number four on Hanover, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. It's only the 17 foul for the Maroons, but it's a big one it's as Ian Hammond one, picks up his fourth. Well, you play this period of the quarter, and there's only there's only three fouls total in that first in that third quarter. Now the first one in the fourth quarter. Seven minutes remain. Five point Galesburg lead. Coach Rain. Dexter has no intention at this point. Looks like to change Rain personnel. Tapper. Tapper's back in playing with four fouls. <laughs> this is Glasgow. Thompson Can't from the other corner. The short. Gets his own rebound. Dexter hammers him. Dexter's in among the men in there. I mean, he's doing a great job. He's fighting for it, but he can't out jump those guys. So uh, Galesburg will get the ball under their uh, basket on the end line. Again, 49-44, Galesburg by five. Moline hustling now, looking uh, two-three zone. Skip pass, steal, ball fake, drives. Ball stip, good hands, Travis Wilson. Yeah. Galesburg's got it. Well, he picks up the dribbler and, and takes away the only potential pass he has. That's really good defense. Good defense. Well, we'll watch him on TV next year. Coach out in Arizona. We'll hopefully see Thompson and Range over at Iowa. Watch some UIC games and see Ian Hanneman. That'll be some pretty exciting times. People yeah, we'll have a chance around. to see all these young men playing on right. national TV here. Range got the ball in the corner, kicks it out. Good ball movement here, gets a three. Strong, off the iron, won't go, Hanneman. Hanneman controls the rebound, gives it to Springer. 6.09 to go, and a five-point lead by Galesburg. Man-to-man. -man. Defense, 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 defense. Nice pass, wide open. Little pick and roll, and nobody picked up Hanneman all into the basket. And that's classic pick and roll. That was good basketball. Marcus Morrow and Ian Hannah. Had two guys running out on Morrow. Very unselfish move. He dumped the ball right off. Great assist. Three-point game. Range has it. Ooh, loses it. Morrow takes it all the way. Won't go. Tip in by Travis Wilson. 49-48. One-point game. Range takes it to the hole. Players make 19 big points for range. 51 48 is our score. 5 08 to go. Fourth quarter action. The winner to move on to Super Slug. Range, steal, look out. In fact, in fact, Ryan Dexter, everybody's up off the deck. He's going to get the foul. Yep. That's his fourth. Range will go to the line, shoot fair. Boy, that hurts with both those guys with four fouls. You got your outside shooter with four. You got your post player with four. But they got to play now. There, no, there is no tomorrow, no. so play on, boys. If you foul out, you foul out. Be careful. Yeah. Play hard, but be careful. That's right. Especially, especially in a three-point ball game where you don't want to, you know, right now there's no need for any... You know, there's a foul that's a big momentum foul, and I'll tell you why. If Dexter doesn't make a play, we get a big-time slam dunk. You betcha. Momentum shifts again. Not only is it a five-point lead, but it's bigger than that. That's a big jam. That's a big jam coming. Dexter yep. went down, gave it his best shot, giving away about six, seven inches. Well, I'll tell you, Ryan Dexter's not going to back away on a, on a breakaway layup. We've seen that all year long. He, and, he, and they're, they're not intentional fouls. He's going hard for the basketball. It's not his fault. He's not quite as tall as those guys. And it saved Moline a point. 
More importantly, it saved him a point. Yep. Range made the first, missed the second. Hanneman pulls down the rebound. Here's the Maroons. And you wonder if that's going to make any difference when we get down to the last few seconds of this ball game. That one point at the five-minute mark where Dexter commits the foul and uh, Range only converts on one free throw as opposed to a slam dunk. Moline takes a 20-second timeout. Well, let's take a quick look at the scoring here. Range has gone, he's got an even 20 points on the night. Wow. Thompson has uh, 16 points for the bulk of the Galesburg scoring. And for the Maroons, uh, Wilson 17 points. Dexter 14 points. Hannibal 12 points. Well, the rebounds are just about the same also, Coach. You're looking at Thompson for Galesburg has eight. Hannibal has eight. Travis Wilson has five. And Taylor Thiel has four. So I mean, even those are matching up, and that's probably why it's 52 to 48 with 4:38 to go. Well, it's, it's living up to everything it was billed for. <laughs> well, let's take her down to the wire now, Coach. Galesburg, a little zone here, huh? Well, they sure are, but they get inside, outside. Travis had a look, passed it up. High-low post play here now. They almost had Hanneman open underneath. Dexter, Hanneman. That's a good call. That's a good That's call. A foul. That's going to be on uh, range, I do believe. Let's see. 34, sure enough. That's his third. Only three team fouls for each team now. Oh, we got four up there for Moline. I must have missed one somewhere. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Good hustle by Tapper outside that time. Almost had to steal, but he did disrupt the Moline offense. Man to man now for the streaks. Yep. Dexter gets that ball over tomorrow. Hanavan to Dexter for three. Off the iron. Timeout call, Moline. Ryan Dexter on a smart play. Let's keep it here for just a second. Compare points scored that you just mentioned to averages. As we go through, Joey Range is averaging 21.4, and right now he's got, he's right at 20. 20. Uh, Thompson's averaging 15. He's at 16. We'll go to Moline. Travis Wilson's averaging 21. He's at 17. And Ian Hanneman, 16. He's at 12. They're on target. How about Dexter? Dexter is averaging 5.7 points a ball game. He's at 14. There you go. There's Four a big threes. Difference. Okay. And we'll take a look maybe at Steve Glasgow for uh, for uh, Galesburg. Glasgow. He's got he's got three points. He's averaging about eight, a little over eight points a ball game. Spranger, on the other hand, is averaging eight and a half points a ball game. And Spranger getting shut out. Getting so shut out. But early. He had four or five assists on good entry right. passes. Right. I mean, to me, that's like scoring two points. So, but four of those, he's got his average. Okay, here we go. Back to live well, back to now. action, huh? Let's get right at it. 3.53 to go, four-point lead. Moley with the ball after their heads-up play by Ryan Dexter to call the timeout as he's going out of bounds. Man to man. Now Moley's going to go double high post pick and roll. They got Dexter a shot, set play off of that, but boy, did Galesburg run to that. Hanneman spins, drop step, won't go. Travis Wilson. Wilson. A three on Travis. <laughs> go back to ref school. Well, that's well, you know, I've always, about it. Well, we're out here at midcourt. We didn't mention that, I guess, but same place we were the other night. We get we get a, a, a real good crowd feel for being in the middle. Get a real good feel for the crowd who they're rooting for. I'm wondering if Jess, Jess Medina, our producer director, I'm wondering if he's sweating up there in the in the in the balcony because it's hot down here at courtside. He's sweating. He said. Of course, J Jess will sweat in a blizzard, so Jess, it may not be. Jess has got that tattoo, you know. <laughs> Born to sweat. <laughs> Yeah, Galesburg with the ball. 3.33 to go. Bring him on down, Coach. Here comes Glasgow. Quickly ahead to field. Oh, three ball. Short. Ooh, real short. Well, I don't Springer. know about that. It's good if it goes. Yep. It's a great shot if That's it goes. That's right. 
Ooh, tough play there, boy. Inside the hand of him, got a knee in him there a little bit. Springer! That's not gonna count. Top of the bank board, rectangular board is out of play. So here we are at 3-10, still a four-point lead. Actually, I think it hit the support piece up there. Either way, pitch is called is out of play. 3-0-4 to go, and we're still stuck, 52-48. Steve Glasgow brings it up. Range on the outside, Thompson on the outside. Wide Glasgow he finds range down low. Marlow makes a great effort, but can't get the steal. You can't give him the ball down there. Six-point lead. Man to man. Boy, Every Galesburg's done a nice job of changing defenses tonight, and, and it's taken Moline just each time about 30 seconds to two minutes to figure out what they really want to do. That's a good move. That's going to be two. Oh, off the front. Yeah, look good. good. Look real good from here. Quickly ahead. Glasgow up. Won't go. Hanneman. Big Hanneman, board. Big rebound by Hanneman and Morrow on the run. Looking for Travis Wilson. And they'll set up, Moline will set up, down six. You need a real good shot here. Boy, every position is critical right Time now. Time is not a factor right now. A good shot is a factor. Morrow, stop, pops, strong off the back line, won't go. Boy, those shots look good. We got a good angle here. They really do, those last Hand two of a look shot, Morrow shot, both look real good. Well, well Reyes rips work. down another rebound. Thompson in the paint on the free throw line. Galesburg spreading the floor just a little bit here well, now. got six point lead and we're under two minutes. They That's say, right. Let's, uh, maybe Coach Miller says we've got enough points. Let's shoot nothing but layups. Foul and has got some fouls to give. Morrow reaches in. That's four on Marcus. Well, Galesburg's gonna use a timeout. Full timeout. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back with 1.43 to go at Galesburg leading 54-48. Jim Sanders and Jim Smith. This is a TCI Channel 38 Family Ties production. We'll be back with the conclusion of the sectional championship game in just a minute. Oh. And we're back here at the Panther Den. Well, folks, it's coming down to the final one minute and 43 seconds. Streaks have the ball and a six-point lead. They're going to spread the floor, use some clock. Running some back picks off that coach against uh, Moline's man-to-man -man defense now. Moline's hustling for the ball. And that's still dribbles it in the middle. Ooh, Loses that ball. Trapper comes up with it. Range dribbles through the middle. They're going to nice be content. To, they're going to be content to make Moline That's follow right. them and not shoot the ball. Penetrate, back cuts, take an easy basket if they get it. Running time, 112 to go. Oh my! What? And that's two right. times they've lost the ball in this possession. Right. And a Galesburg player has been right there. Glasgow's in the corner here. He's on the dribble against Morrow. Kicked it back out the top. Man, to one nice minute. Nice job. Nice job by Galesburg in their delay game. Glasgow. Moline's Steel got a foul. in the corner. Long skip past the tapper to range. And Dexter's going to come out in foul range. And that could be it for Dexter. He's going to leave the game with five fouls. Coach Dexter up off the bench saying, we got a foul, guys. we got a foul. And that'll put... They'll be in the bonus, right? Yeah. That'll put him in the bonus. That put him over the seventh team foul. Well, I'll tell you what. Five fouls on Dexter. Moline will make a switch here. We'll see who they come in with. More than... Well, Moline's been stuck on the 48 since three minutes and 10 seconds to go. There was a timeout there, I think, and uh, Galesburg scored one basket. Kettner's going to come in and replace Dexter. Dexter did a nice job tonight, Coach. He ended up with how many points? Dexter, uh, he'll leave the game with 14. That's a nice effort. Very nice effort by the junior guard, point guard. Handled the pressure real well, I think, tonight as far as as handling the ball. Yeah, very nice Getting job. Getting the ball to the right guys, and when they needed him in that third quarter, he hit the, he hit the three-point shots. Well, here's big points. And boy, I tell you, Galesburg has done a nice job, like you said, but in the last possession, luck just wasn't there. Moline knocked the ball away three times and yeah. didn't get it any of those three times, and it wasn't because they weren't hustling. 
Range gets them both. Eight point lead now as, as Morrow brings the ball across to Moline. Now Moline's got to put the ball up. Springer long three. Oh, ball in and out. Can't buy a basket. Quick foul by Kettner. Well, you gotta, you gotta go foul him right now. Gotta do it right now. That was excellent. Excellent play by Kettner and a ball that wouldn't Kettner. stay down. One and one again. Well, Rod Thompson's gonna go to the line. He's got 16 on the night. 56-48, six-point lead, 43 seconds. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't think either team has anything to be ashamed of. That's oh, for no. darn sure. Played exceptional basketball. Moline's had three or four shots lately that looked good from where we were at that didn't go in. And the delay game by Galesburg's been exceptional. Yeah, they did a nice job of handling the ball. Got, like you said, last when Range was shooting, he got lucky a couple times That's where the right. ball came loose. And Galesburg player happened to be there. That's right. Hey, you got to be a little lucky still along the way, too. Well, four big free throws now down the stretch by the two big guns for Galesburg. Range with two, Thompson with two. Travis Wilson shoots that ball as he was on the line. Hanovan drives in, doesn't go. And if he fouls, he's going to be gone. Reach in, foul on somebody. Maybe Springer here. Let's see. Yeah, going to be Springer's Kenny Springer. Pick the foul up. One and one for the last time from now on. After this one, we're looking at two shots the rest of the way for Galesburg. The Galesburg fans are getting excited. Got Boche up off the bench. He's going to come in for the streaks. Who's he coming to gonna get? Tapper? That would be my guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Manning going to come in. Joe Manning, the 6'2 sophomore, is going to go man. And who's Manning's he going to coming for? for? Kettner. Kettner's going to come and sit down. One and one. Well, Glasgow hadn't scored since the first quarter. He had three points. He had to started the game off with a three point That's right. Play. That's right. And he misses it. Oh, here we go. Wilson quickly up the floor. Morrow, three. Go. Oh, won't go. Thompson to range to Glasgow. Pulls it back out, thinks better of it. 10 seconds. Galesburg's going to win it. Glasgow in the corner. Got a oh, 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 jam by range to finish it off. And that will do it. Travis Wilson, by just a mention here, he dislocated his finger here and somewhere along the line the last couple minutes. That baby's all knocked out of shape there. Had nothing to you know, as far as the final outcome, but what great effort at the end of the ball game. Well, Coach, we're sectional champions. They're rated number one coming in. Moline was rated number two, and it finished just that way. A 60-48 win for Galesburg. At this time, Gordy Cornelius, the principal of United Township High School, is going to make a presentation here of the trophy to the Galesburg Silver Streaks. Captains, please report over here by the scorer's table to get the sectional championship flag, please. As the Galesburg players work themselves this way, you know, Gordy Cornelius will make the presentation. They haven't got the players over here yet, but they're heading that way. They're already interviewing Thompson. Joey Range is going to come over, pick up the trophy. Galesburg are the, are the sectional champions. The Silver Streaks advance to Tuesday night's ball game and Rockford. We got a couple quick stats, Coach, while we're watching Galesburg celebrate. Well, we got the scores here for Galesburg, led by their two big men. Joey Range with 26. Rod Thompson with 18. And then everybody else in single digits, uh, Glasgow with three, Theo with three, Hanlon with four, and uh, Mike Tapper, six points. For Moline, led by Travis Wilson, 17 points. Ryan Dexter with 14 points. Uh, Ian Hanneman with 12 points. And Marcus Morrow with five points. And that's the Moline scoring. They got, they only had four players score.
And a critical time, a critical stat was Galesburg outscored Moline down the stretch in fourth quarter, 14 to four. Yep. Well, Moline made a valiant effort, Coach, there. When they when he came back in that third quarter with uh, Ryan Dexter hit several threes that brought him right back in. But coaching takes it out of effect. Both coaches, I thought, did a nice job. Coach Dexter changed defenses several times. But all of a sudden, you know, Moline is killing, killing Galesburg early inside, and they go to zone. Then Moline starts hitting the out, outside shot. Galesburg just back man to man, and that's how our ball game finished up. They stayed after him and ran after him real well. A great win by Galesburg tonight. Well, and Moline ends up 25 and three. All three losses being hard-fought games against the Galesburg Silver Streak. Yep. So we congratulate the Moline Maroons on a great, great season. And Coach Dexter and his staff should be proud of what they've accomplished this year. And we wish all the best to Galesburg as they move on to the super sectional up in Rockford. So why don't we wrap it up here, Coach, and get out. So well, it's been a lot of fun, Coach. We've had a great, a great uh, run. We weren't on as often this winter as we'd like. Uh, we'll put another plug in for uh, next year. We'd like to bring you lots of football basketball games from the Illinois and the Iowa side. We need some help though. There's no question about that. If you're interested at all or know anybody that'd be interested in sponsoring some of these ball games, uh, we would certainly encourage them to get a hold of Jess Medina, 755-7607. We really would appreciate that. Great effort though tonight by both teams and Galesburg comes out our winner 60-48. to 48. This is Jim Sanders for Jim Smith, Tim Sanders, Jess Medina, and we're going to close from the Panther Den. Coach, we'll see you around somewhere sometime. Hopefully soon.
Another one of our great sponsors is Economy Heating and Plumbing, 817 7th Avenue, Comanche, Iowa, 319-259-1207. Economy Plumbing and Heating, a carrier dealer for all your heating and air conditioning needs. Good luck to the Comanche Indians from Kurt and Kelly Peterson. Another one of our sponsors is the Illawa Thrift Store. They are at 1004 4th Street, downtown Fulton, Illinois. The phone number is 815-589-2012. Store hours are 930 to 1230 Monday through Saturday and Friday 930 to 5. We have added Wednesday evening 430 to 6. We accept donations for the sale of good clean clothing, household items, and furniture. Over 40 volunteers run and direct the store. Proceeds go to the benevolent needs in the area. Thank you for your support. The Yellowwood Thrift Store. Another one of our great sponsors is Cottage Pastry, 1008 4th Street, Fulton, Illinois. They are a full line bakery, donuts, rolls, hamburger buns, dinner rolls, multi-grain health bread, and a variety of breads. For all your bakery needs, Cottage Pastry. Their hours are Tuesday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. So for all your bakery needs, Cottage Pastry, owned by Karen and Dick Abbott, 1008 4th Street, Fulton, Illinois. Berg Pharmacy for all your prescription needs at competitive prices. They also have gifts, collectibles, and a good selection of cards. Hours are 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, and 9 to 5 on Saturday. Berg Pharmacy, Terry J. Tufty, owner, 1016 4th Street, Fulton, Illinois, 815-589-2233, Berg Pharmacy.
Good pitch. Good pitch. Right on the outside corner. So two outs. Runners still in the corners. Brett Koenig is now the batter for Dixon. Ball one. This would be a huge lift for Alman, I think, if they can uh, get out of this inning without Dixon scoring a run after the way the inning started. Huge out here. Balls it off. One ball, one strike. Two outs, runners still at the corners. And you know, Dixon really hasn't hit the ball uh, out of the infield. Uh, like I don't know if they even have a ball out of the infield. They've had the three months when they scored the two runs, but uh, they might have had maybe one, one hit out maybe the right, the right side. But other than that, Dixon has not hit the ball all that well. But they've been able to do what they need to do to score runs. And they have the lead two to one. Strike. Good pitch and good cut. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Runners at the corners. Top of the sixth inning. Dixon to Alleman one. There we go. Ball outside. <laughs> Here we go again. Will he get him? Oh, just missed. Just missed. Just missed, and it is a full count. A full count here. First runners on first and second, first and third, two outs. Or the first, he's back. Back over. He's back. Shot three, and he got him out. Huge lift for Alleman here. So after five and a half innings, the score is. Dixon to Alleman one. <laughs> Leading off for Alleman here in the bottom of the sixth inning is Brian Kokite. First pitch to him is the ball. Fly ball, left field. And the left fielder makes the catch for the first out. Come on, Bill. Next batter is number 10, Bill Ely, the catcher. Hit the second baseman who makes the catch for the second out. So it's quickly two up and two down here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the next batter is Wes Heaton.
Paul inside. Called it off. Not a play. Still two to one in favor of Dixon. There's two outs, one ball, one strike on the batter. Long fly for a hit. Coleman has a runner with two outs and the batter is Jake Smithers. And we have a pinch runner for Alleman. Jake Smithers is the batter. <laughs> Strike one. Ball. One ball, one strike. Throw to first. He's back. is a strike. Outside corner. One ball, two strikes. It's ball. Oh, two balls, two strikes. Two outs. Runner on first. Bottom of the sixth inning. Dixon Two, Alm and one. Sit over to third, over to first, for the third out. And after six complete innings, the score is Dixon two, Alm and one. Leading off for Dixon in the top of the seventh inning will be Josh Hackert. First pitch of the ball. Strike. It's been really a pretty good outing for uh, Kogite. Just the three months in the one inning. He's getting up to two runs. Strike two. Actually, for an opening season game, it's been pretty well played by both teams. Check three, he's out of there. The next batter for Dixon is number nine, Tim Burgess. He started the game as pitcher. To hit in the hole. He's on. So Dixon has a runner on with one out. The batter will be number one, Scott Ron. Scott Roan. 
Let's see if he'll be bunting to advance to try to score that other run. 